Hello everyone and welcome to the Adam Josh Oral Brog episode number 48. And this brog is more of a commentary on the Adam Josh. This Adam Josh Oral Brog, rather, is more of a commentary on my last brog titled Official UFO Disclosure Underway. And if I seem a little off or different today, it's because I am purposefully avoiding the use of the word uh and the pauses that people tend to take while they're talking to reflect. I actually don't talk like the way I usually do on the Adam Josh Oral Brog. If you go back in the past and see the uh, old episodes, I actually don't talk like that in my normal everyday life because usually when I'm talking to people, I'm <laughs> aware that they're not recording me. So when I'm record being recorded, I like to say things properly so they don't get misinterpreted later. And instead of pausing for the uhs in between every other sentence or word now, I'm going to look even weirder if I try to just speak consistently. So the last blog, or brog, that I wrote, uh, official Ooh, there's one. Official UFO disclosure underway. In case you haven't been paying attention, the U.S. government has slowly been disclosing information about UFOs. I put UFO in quotations because I know that some aren't unidentified, but man-made and currently classified above top secret. The fact that the NSA and FBI has declassified an old UFO files is a pretty major step forward in this whole disclosure process. For what ends is another topic, which I will record an A-job for shortly. That's what I'm doing right now. Some people of faith think it's all just demons, so we do need to talk about this. And then I give links for the NASA and FBI websites where they're on their websites declassifying information. I mean, and it's not just... It's not just information like, oh, there was swamp gas in the sky and that's what... Uh, soldier so-and-so saw or officer so-and-so saw. I mean, you can look on it on the website yourself. Let's see over here. So, you have in-camera affidavit, interviews, part A to J, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and all the way down to 42 different documented events on the NSA's website that document quote unquote UFO sightings, activity, paranormal UFO activity type things. And here is uh, the FBI records. You can go on their website and uh, check this out for yourself. And there's a whole vault of information there as well about UFOs. Now, on my website, I linked to the National Press Club's September 27th press conference where they had a panel of former Air Force officers and high-ranking uh, Air Force and other U.S. government officials on record telling their stories about the UFOs that they encountered. And the reason that it holds weight is because all these people have uh, a long list, there's two, a long list of credentials and seemingly no reason to to sully their own name intentionally to look like little green men believers or whatever you would want to call them. <clears throat> My point being, if you have the time, I would recommend that you watch uh, this video 
and there I, I also link to two other ones underneath it. Aside from all this new information, we can see an onslaught of alien movies slated for this and next year, but that's Hollywood, right? So that doesn't matter. Propaganda films were never used to sway opinion. Check out this National Press Club conference that CNN aired last year, so then I linked to this. And then I say related, see Skunk Works, Technology, Where Are We Really, and Helium 3, Mining the Moon. Those are three other brogs that I've spent some time on and researched. This is why I link to my own stuff, because I have researched it myself. And I think that when people come to my website, they should be looking at my personal interpretation or my my interpretation of the information that I've studied myself and not... Uh, there's three. Somebody else's information entirely, I suppose. I don't know. That's another topic. But <clears throat> my point was, backing up, the reason I wanted to record an A-job is because I've come to the conclusion on my own through looking at old USAF pictures, Air, US Air Force pictures of flattened disks and Nazi flying bells, the Hanavu, and Skunk Works, Lockheed Martin development projects. You can clearly see uh, that anti-gravity Tesla-based technology was in use far as back as the 50s and 60s. John Lear has put his name and reputation as well on the line uh, to confirm all this. John Lear being the son of uh, William Lear, I believe, is his name, the man who invented and the jet and airline. Excuse me. Regardless, as I was saying, my personal belief is that these man-made flying disks are one part of the equation. They do exist, it's not debatable. Man-made anti-gravity flying disks exist. I don't know whether you need to slam it through your head or get a banana and beat it into your head, but you need, if you don't believe that or accept it, you are like living in the times where the world is still flat or you know, it doesn't matter that Ford and his crew are building this horseless carriage because I'm going to stick to my horse and buggy. Like, you're living in these ancient times that uh, maybe th there's fourth, there may be through religious teaching or indoctrination or your big fancy alphabet soup after, ne uh, after your uh, university education. Maybe it's actually educating you out right out of a proper. Uh, open-mindedness and real education. Man-made flying disks have existed for centuries. That's not debatable. The, the part that's up for debate is whether they were back-engineered from visitors from off-world. So that's, a, that's an entire topic to itself. And the reason that I want to talk about this is because recently I've been coming across some information where Christian theologians and Christian end times eschatology people are actually telling their flock and being on video telling them and sort of like mocking them saying, you do know this is all just demons, right? Like when you see a, a light in the sky, it's an extra dimensional demon, or then they might even throw in some David Icke information to say, oh, this is an extra dimensional uh, being that is appearing and disappearing. It's all just demons. So, I don't need to explain to you, if you're watching this, most people, I don't need to explain to most people the uh, Christian ignorance and arrogance that is the mainstream Christianity teaching or uh, on a lot of topics. You know, we rode dinosaurs 6,000 years ago, and, uh, you know, all this nonsense. Things that are just so... I mean, I'm, I, and as far as that, that goes, the Earth being 6,000 years old and all that goes, I call it nonsense. But at the same time, if somebody sat you in front of a tree the moment after it was created, 
if you could create, if you had the power to create things, and somebody sat you in front of that tree and said, how old is that tree? You'd say, well, it looks about 100 years old. Big tree. No, it was just created. So at the same time that I can accept that uh, the powers of creation and the powers of things that we probably fully don't understand yet, I think it's pretty ridiculous to say that the Earth is 6,000 years old. I think that's sort of common knowledge. But at the same time, if somebody could clearly show me that it was just created like that, you know, you look at a fully grown man and say, oh, he looks about 30 years old. No, he was just created like that. Then who am I to argue with? As I've always said, I side with the truth. Whatever the truth is, that's what I'm going to side with. So, most importantly, backing up about this point I was trying to make, the Christian theologians are saying that all UFOs are demons. The reason that's a huge problem is because, as I said earlier, man-made UFOs have existed for centuries. So what's there to be gained by all of Christendom who will believe it, believing that UFOs are demons? Will all of Christendom want to attack those demons if they come back or suddenly appear in a third world war or whatever? Wasn't it Ronald Reagan who said that he would always wonder how the world would unite if the world was presented with an external threat, threat like from aliens? We can see that the enemy is being increasingly loosely defined generation after generation. Increasingly more loosely defined, you know. Now, at one point it was Soviets, Russians, Japanese, East Asia, whatever, and now it's sort of like the war on terrorism, the war on drugs, the global war on terrorism. And if we can take it from that to the external threat of aliens, imagine how much unity and funding and etc etc that we could get from the people of earth if they could unite together against one common threat as Reagan said the aliens seeking to invade us having the backing of the Christians because they're all demons according to the Christian teachers meanwhile all this nonsense that's being paraded around uh, is being orchestrated by things like Project Bluebeam and government above top secret uh, space vehicles or anti-gravity vehicles manned by pilots who may be duped or brainwashed. What's going on in all the underground bunkers all over the world? You tell me, I don't know. <clears throat> Things to keep in mind. So the reason that all this is important is because whether you believe it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you want to fight kicking and screaming tooth and nail all the way down the line, uh, the government of the United States is, is now starting to leak out information, leak out information about UFOs and alien life through shows like The Event, through the onslaught of alien movies coming out. I just saw uh, Super 8 last night. I think that's my sixth or seventh. Uh, I was trying not to do it, but... And uh, Super 8 uh, was was pretty good. It wasn't horrible. But I think my honest opinion is that it's sort of like Goonies plus E.T. equals Super 8. Steven Spielberg had his classical spin on uh, the misunderstood alien. All these things are starting to happen, and this is the world that we're living in. So the people that are sort of old school and not wanting to come along with this, where the government or where whoever is leading us, it doesn't really matter because this is this is what's coming down the drain. You know, this is what's coming our way. This is what's happening. So. The people in Christendom and people of faith need to know that there are man-made flying discs. You can Google this, you can look all this information up yourself. There are people on record that will, that will risk 
their entire career and family name and all that to say that there are, such as John Lear and these people in the UFO National Press Club conference uh, that I linked to earlier. And if you if you can do your own research, that's great as well. I've done some research called Skunk Works. I've done blogs by Skunk Works, Technology, Where Are We Really, and Helium-3, Mining the Moon. Uh, you can look up Flying Bells, Anti-Gravity Technology. It sort of ties in with the reason that all Tesla-based technology has been classified for all these years because Tesla, John Hutchison, and Scalar Technology all sort of leaps in or envelops this field of anti-gravity, free energy, zero-point energy, etc., etc. It's not beyond the military-industrial complex to hoax an alien invasion. I think that needs to be said. It may seem very far-fetched right now, but if you can convince the people on average that there's this imposing alien threat, then it sort of might be more believable. As far as my personal opinion goes, as I've said before in times past, I side with the truth. I'm led to believe that we're being lied to about the other planets in our solar system. I'm led to believe that we're being lied to about population on the moon and Mars, colonies on Mars, a mining operation on Mars, sorry, on the moon, a mining operation on the moon, population on the moon and Mars. I'm led to believe that we're being lied to about that. All the moon pictures that we were getting are heavily airbrushed or in black and white, when the truth is, the when you if you were looking at the moon with your own physical eyes, it's not black and white. You'd see full color, whatever. The dark side of the moon isn't actually dark, it sees the sun as well, and there's people that have theorized that there's gravity and uh, trees and a population on the inside and outside of the moon and Mars. Just because our planet is populated on the outside doesn't mean that other planets couldn't be populated on the inside. And of course we know that there's large caves all over even the Earth where there's whole cities underground under Denver, Colorado Airport and other places. These are, all, uh, these are all things that need to be looked into individually to get a firm grip on what's coming down the pike, pipe. People, some people say pipe, some people say pike. As far as uh, aliens go. Rahm Emanuel and Hillary Clinton both have said never let a good crisis go to waste. So the if you could get people to believe in an alien invasion, I think that's a pretty good crisis that you could let not go let go to waste. Endless amounts of backing for money for new wars or new technologies or you would give up your rights pretty easily to the government to keep you safe from an alien invasion because pretty clearly you don't have the advanced technology on hand that we do. Coincidentally, the government throughout the years has kept us from mass producing this advanced technology like Tesla, Scalar, Weaponry, and uh, John Hutchinson's finding as well. So, back to my personal opinion about aliens. I think if you want to get really technical, if you want to say that uh, an entity from another dimension met Muhammad in a cave and recited uh, or taught him a Quran. I think by today's standards that would be sort of classified as an alien. I think if you looked at any any re religion and even a lot of religions openly do claim their authority from those from beyond this realm or beyond this planet, beyond this earth. Some ancient Chinese cultures, uh, uh, the ancient Chinese dynasty gets his power, uh, and claims the right to have power because he is descended from beings that came from the serpent gods that came from outside this world. 
So aliens, the concept of those from another dimension or those from somewhere else have prevailed in our culture and our religion for as long as we've been documenting our culture and religion. So it's not, it's not hard for me as a person to say that aliens or life exists outside of this planet here. Another way that I look at it is that everything is energy and energy is alive, so technically there's life all over the universe. We've found through physics and quantum physics, rather, that this desk isn't actually solid, that it's made up of particles with 99.9% .9 space in between the atoms. And that space isn't empty as well, that's also filled with other things. So originally, Physicists thought they would discover sort of like the bricks of matter that compose matter, but that's not what they found. What they found was empty space the more they looked, and energy. So for me, it's not hard to believe that energy is everywhere because I don't look at a rock and see a lifeless object. I look at a rock and see particles of energy, of living matter in that sense. Energy is matter. Energy, sorry, is alive. And energy makes up everything that we see. Different forms of information and energy, and that's everywhere. So it's not hard for somebody like me to, to believe that life exists elsewhere. I think it's already been admitted that they found water on the moon and single-celled organisms on Mars, along with, of course, the hexagonal shapes and faces and different carvings and ruins. So it's also been said that NASA is a big front for the secret space program, that NASA is primary, primarily concerned with keeping the information uh, about extraterrestrial life and other other life outside of our planet, keeping that information from people of Earth. People have said that Earth is a slave planet, that the moon has been dragged into orbit from Saturn, from an early colonization and advanced technology and anti-gravity spaceships, stargates, and inter interdimensional travel has always ex existed on this planet, but has been kept from the masses and held for the most powerful. These are things that I can't confirm or deny because I haven't seen any of these things myself. And I would always side with the truth, either way. Otherwise, he's asked you to call back. Okay. My point earlier was when the people of faith try to dismiss all this information as it's just demons, you, you and them both need to be more educated. You need to be more educated than that because if you fall into that trap of thinking everything is a demon or every... Uh, Everything, well, I mean, in this case, man-made UFOs are demons. I mean, that's a pretty hefty trap. You're setting yourself up for a big fall. Because what if somebody says, okay, they're demons. Now we should fight the demons. So you're getting, you're being baited, you know. But if you're believing that all things UFO are demons or extra, extra dimensional evil people, to believe that every visitor from another dimension or to believe that any everything from elsewhere is a threat to us is nonsense clearly if there's entities that have made these ufos and an anti-gravity technology and they're disabling nuclear bases obviously they can arm nuclear bases or use nuclear weaponry uh they could have massive destructive powers and here we still are so do you really think that these entities would travel millions of miles across or millions and billions of light years across the universe to come and wipe us off the face of the earth? Because it hasn't happened yet. At the same time, it doesn't really make sense why the classic greys and aliens consistently probe people. Like, haven't you learned enough stuff that, you know, hundreds of years ago? Why would you continually probe and continually mutilate cows and continually make crop circles? people counter that with, well, if it was a zoo, if you look at the earth like a zoo, then you don't live in the zoo, you watch the zoo. You, if it's an experiment, you don't interject yourself in the experiment. These are all things that I, that we're going to 
as a society and the next generation are going to have to face, start facing these questions because the media is telling us now it's time to start addressing this issue. The government, FBI, NSA is now leaking these, this information out to you trying to say like, oh yeah, here it is, you know, we weren't really hiding it. Yeah, we've denied it all these years, but here it is. So you're being presented with these choices now and with these with this information. You're going to have to decide what to do with it. I, all I'm asking is that you keep an open mind. Don't be too quick to demonize anybody and realize that the same people who are telling you this usually have a vested interest in why they're telling you this and they're trying to form your opinion a lot. So when I, even this video is, is on CNN, so I'm thinking like, how is this on CNN? How, how is that even happening? What, what's the purpose of this? Does it? How does it play into their hand? Especially if the bulk of the uh, press conference was talking about disarming nuclear weapons, which seems like a pretty benevolent thing. But they're trying to spin it in a way that says if they're disarming nuclear weapons, they could also be arming nuclear weapons, which makes them a threat, which we have to fight. So now we need more money and we need a new army and we need all this stuff which might be playing directly into somebody's agenda. Aside from all that, if you honestly think that humanity could fend off an alien invasion in that sense, I mean, the classic Southern American will say, we'll go out fighting, but it's really not a fair fight because the, the, the tables have been tilted and rigged for millennia, you know. That's all I have to say. It's a lot to take in, I know. Thank you for watching. A job. The Adam Josh Oral Brog. Tell your friends to get a job. Thanks for watching.